Now, switching to a different issue in Canada, a documentary produced by Radio Canada has exposed just how quickly young, vulnerable children are being pushed into life-changing hormone treatments and gender reassignment surgeries. The French-speaking documentary followed a 14-year-old girl at her first appointment. This is her first appointment at a private clinic in Quebec. She was given a testosterone prescription and even asked about possible surgeries just nine minutes into her appointment. Again, Adam, this is incredible. This is a trend we have seen in the West, in North America, parts of Europe, right here in Australia. And we are slowly getting some clarity around the medical practices in this field. Yeah, um, what's happening to these children who are confused, who might be experiencing dysphoria, or who may be just caught in, being caught up in a trend, what's happening to them is that the adults in the room are failing them, or the adults are treating the children like adults. And as soon as they have a whimsical idea of what they want to become, they just go along with it. There are no hurdles for these young people, right? They have people who are enabling them. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing enablers who are ultimately benefiting the medical industry. We're seeing them benefit big pharma, right? Where do you think these, these products are made? Or look, look at all these surgeons who are cutting the breasts off of young girls, mm. of young healthy girls, right? Who makes money off of that? And, and just like you know, any other major issue like foreign wars, always follow the money. And the money always leads to the medical industry, mm. right? But at the end, these kids are left tormented. They're left unresolved. And that's when suicidality actually occurs. Well, there's all sorts of data being released. Michael Schellenberg is doing incredible work uncovering some of the practices in this field. And it is, frankly, frightening. I think it's one of the biggest medical scandals of our time. Now, finally, on your Wrong Speak publishing website, you've published articles exploring how black voters are often portrayed as Democrats who can, well, who can forget this from Biden? But I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. But you say black voters are actually more likely to be conservative at heart, even if they don't vote that way. This year, the polls are showing that Joe Biden and the Democrats are not getting the enthusiasm they expected from black voters. This is something you anticipated would happen last month, describing the Biden administration as treating black and Hispanic voters like a spouse they are cheating on, assuring them they care about them while spending lavishly on their new love. I love that analogy. And that new <laughs> love in this case is illegal migrants. Uh, Tell me about that phenomenon, because uh, we talked about Hispanic voters switching to Trump. Trump's winning uh, unprecedented support from that group compared to previous Republicans. But black voters have been such a solid voting bloc for the Democrats for a long time, something like 90 per cent vote for the Democrats. Yeah, this actually has more to do with uh, demographics locations and which political party fights for these particular locations. So, you know, throughout the United States, you look at, you know, every four years when the presidential race happens, you see them count all these rural areas, they show up red, and then what happens? They count these blue cities and they lose the state. Why? Because majority of the people who live in these states live in the cities. Well, this also counts for black Americans. And what ends up happening is the Republicans aren't necessarily fighting for the vote within these cities. So it's actually an unreasonable ask to say, hey, I know we don't show up locally and we have nobody that runs in your in your uh, in your locality and we haven't been there for decades. But uh, vote for us in the national election. Right. It's an unreasonable ask. And so what ends up happening is that everyone presumes that black Americans are just in love with the Democrats rather than it being that they're the only choice, right? You can't vote for a party that isn't on the ballot. And from time after time, whether it be major cities, small cities in these states, you can look, Democrats run unopposed. And the choice is, do you want a blue dog, moderate Democrat, or do you want a communist? <laughs> Adam B. Coleman, uh, always a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you so much for your time this evening. Thank you.